Breaking tonight, Hillary Clinton's campaign announces it will join Green Party candidate Jill Stein's presidential vote recount in three pivotal states, even though Hillary Clinton has already conceded the election. This almost three weeks after the presidential election was called for Donald Trump. This after Democrats were horrified when then-candidate Donald Trump, in his last debate with Clinton, wouldn't commit to accepting the election results, simply saying he would look at it at the time and keep us all in suspense. And Hillary's response to that? Take a listen. That's horrifying. That is not the way our democracy works. We've been around for 240 years. We've had free and fair elections. We've accepted the outcomes when we may not have liked them. And that is what must be expected of anyone standing on a debate stage during a general election. I, for one, am appalled that somebody who is the nominee of one of our two major parties would take that kind of position. Appalled. And she then doubled down on the outrage, causing some to actually protest. He said something truly horrifying. He became the first person running for president, Republican or Democrat, who refused to say that he would respect the results of this election. That is a direct threat to our democracy. And even though she couldn't come out election night and concede, and we now find out that President Obama told her to concede, the next day, she, when she does concede, says, we have to accept the results and look to the future. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Okay, Hillary, now that Donald Trump is looking to help you heal, looking to help heal the nation, would it be fair to say, to use your own words, it's time to give Donald Trump his chance to lead? Welcome back. Well, President-elect Donald Trump has already filled some high posts in his administration, but he still has some hard choices to make for his cabinet. Here to break down the positions that still need to be filled is Republican strategist and Fox News contributor Tony Stayegg. Good to see you, Tony. Hey, good to see you, Abby. All right, so let's start with what we know so far, the picks that he's made. Sure. So I actually think this is a great decision right here. He's made some decisive choices early on to show the type of direction he's going to appoint the administration. Ryan's previous as chief of staff is interesting because he understands Washington. The critique of President-elect Trump and his group is that they're outsiders. Ryan's could help navigate that, but it's important that he has Steve Bannon in there. He's Steve, had a lot of criticism. He, a lot of it unfounded, a lot of it fabricated. Look, Steve Bannon has beat the elite media through Breitbart, and he beat them through uh, with helping wage the Trump campaign. I think he clearly has the target on his back, but a lot of that is unsubstantiated stuff. But yeah. Bannon represents that outsider kind of populist touch that the Trump White House has to maintain in order to stay true to its message. I think Jeff Sessions, outstanding pick, mm -hmm. one of the earliest supporters. They're like a Flynn people. Of Donald Trump. Trump, exactly. Same with Mike Pompeo. And then two women at the end, Nikki Haley and Betsy DeVos. Betsy DeVos is, is an interesting pick because she truly is one of the biggest leaders in the country for school choice. And this is yeah. something that Donald Trump has made central to his kind of picks. It's actually one of the more dynamic picks I think uh, he could have made for this position, emphasizing that that is going to be a top priority for the administration. And well, Nikki Haley getting a high profile post. Look, she's been a conservative yeah. darling. I think this was, she did not necessarily endorse him early on in the process. This is a very good way for him to show the Republican Party that he's going to include right, a lot well, of people. Let's look ahead because everyone's now speculating about the, the, the positions that he's not picked yet. Most importantly, Secretary of State. And there seems to be uh, some conflict going on behind closed doors about who that person's going to be. Yeah, and there's no doubt that loyalists to the Trump campaign, people who have supported uh, President elect Trump from the start, want Rudy Giuliani or at least see Giuliani as a much more natural pick since he was so outspoken and so strong. His credentials, by the way, are outstanding. Mayor of New York City, he's understood kind of 
world terrorism, global events better than most people, he would be a terrific choice. By flip, Mitt Romney does not seem as conventional because of the harsh criticism he offered President-elect Trump. But the reality is he is somebody, again, with a lot of prestige around the world, and it would send a very interesting and dynamic message if Donald Trump were to pick him. I will remind our, okay, I'll remind our viewers real quick, though. George H.W. Bush and Ronald Reagan were bitter political enemies. George H.W. Bush called Reagan economics voodoo economics when they were political rivals. There is a time for healing in a political coalition, and I think Ronald President -elect said Trump... Some pretty nasty things about Mr. Trump and his character, so I can understand why yeah. some of his oh. Wilson family members are, are struggling with this. Totally understandable. The question is, who is best for these jobs? Politics Correct. aside, well, these are big positions. Homeland uh, Security Secretary. Look, I think, you know, uh, Congressman McCall, who chairs that committee right now in Congress, is a very natural pick. Uh, he's somebody who I think has been outspoken during the Obama administration, sometimes being a little bit more, more lax in the view of many conservatives on the issue. He strikes me as natural. Look, I know a lot of people think Rudy's a natural for that, too, but I think Rudy Giuliani clearly uh, deserves something uh, along the line of Secretary of State in the eyes of those who are loyal to him. But you're absolutely right, Abby, and only Donald Trump and Mike Pence know you do need to pick the best person for the job. Yeah, well, the speculation continues. Tony Zago, it's good to have you here. Great to be with you guys. Thanks. Thanks. With you. All right, let's bring in Scott Brown, a former Massachusetts senator and Fox News contributor. Welcome to you. Good to have you here on this Friday. Uh, uh, good post uh, Thanksgiving. I'm right. still full. I haven't had any breakfast or lunch yet, so I don't anticipate <laughs> dinner either. You and a lot of people. <laughs> well, we hear that you met with the president elect earlier this week, so we want to get right to the top question sure. with the news of the day. What's your take on the announcement of McCann and McFarland? Well, certainly, we all know KT. She's great. I've, I've been on Fox with her many times, and she has a long and storied history uh, of knowledge in this field. And jo Joe Lieberman, I think, said it well, as, many, as well as many others. She, she's perfect, and I'm excited for her, for our country, and for the administration. With regard to the new legal counsel, he's going to have his work cut out for him. And I think the key there is to make sure that if he doesn't know something, he immediately gets help and guidance, uh, because you can't, uh, can't really screw up in that position. And there's going to be a lot of challenges, especially because you have the first businessman in our country's history, uh, in modern history at least, who has uh, you know, some different challenges than, say, a typical politician. Right. Were you surprised to, to hear these names today? Uh, not with KT, not at all. Uh, I don't know too much about uh, you know, Mr. McGahn except his work at the FEC, and he did a good job there, really streamlining and rewriting a lot of those rules and regulations. And, and obviously, he has a, a very solid legal resume. But once again, he's going to have to surround himself with good people also who can advise him, and they will need to, in turn, advise the president. So it's going to be a real team effort. All right, what critical holes in the cabinet do you see that need to be filled coming up? You know, there was a lot made about the sure. economy during the campaign, Treasury Secretary perhaps. Uh, what do you see? Coming well, up. obviously, yeah, obviously, Treasury and, uh, and Secretary of State, I think, are the two most important ones that need to come up, and they will be done in ordinary course. I, I'm very thankful that the president's elect is moving forward and doing so at an at a, at a expeditious pace. Uh, you know, he seems to be picking great people, regardless of whether they were with him or not. Uh, he's going to do what he's going to do, and it doesn't matter what I or you or any of the never Trumpers or never Romney, or whoever it is, say. It's up to him, and where he feels comfortable bringing. Bringing in the best people for the job to move our country forward, I think it's a good thing. Breaking tonight, Hillary Clinton's campaign announces it will join Green Party candidate Jill Stein's presidential vote recount in three pivotal states, even though Hillary Clinton has already conceded the election. This almost three weeks after the presidential election was called for Donald Trump. This after Democrats were horrified when then-candidate Donald Trump, in his last debate with Clinton, wouldn't commit to accepting the election results, simply saying he would look at it at the time and keep us all in suspense. And Hillary's response to that? Take a listen. That's horrifying. That is not the way our democracy works. We've been around for 240 years. We've had free and fair elections. We've accepted the outcomes when we may not have liked them. And that is what must be expected of anyone standing on a debate stage during a general election. I, for one, am appalled that somebody who is the nominee of one of our two major parties would take that kind of position. Appalled. And she then doubled down on the outrage, causing some to actually protest. 
He said something truly horrifying. He became the first person running for president, Republican or Democrat, who refused to say that he would respect the results of this election. That is a direct threat to our democracy. And even though she couldn't come out election night and concede, and we now find out that President Obama told her to concede, the next day, she, when she does concede, says, we have to accept the results and look to the future. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Okay, Hillary, now that Donald Trump is looking to help you heal, looking to help heal the nation, would it be fair to say, to use your own words, it's time to give Donald Trump his chance to lead?